Hello stamping friends, my name is Linda Dolkey and I am a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia and today I wanted to pull out a set that's been around for a while. This is called Painted Harvest, you can see it right here and it's a set with 13 beautiful stamps and these layer over each other in such a way that it actually looks like they have been kind of painted, almost a watercolour look. Um, I've used crumb cake as my base here, but today in this video I'm actually going to use Sahara Sand and, um, and let's uh, put the card together. It's actually very easy, but this is a great set if you've been looking for something um, that will do backgrounds as well as um, focal points, then this is a good one for that. I've also used it for scrapbooking, um, lots and lots of different types, but it is retiring, so it's only around until the 2nd of June 2020 or um, even less if it sells out first but uh, if you want to grab it grab it now and head over to the online store and, and get it um, speak with your demonstrator okay so here are the pieces that we're going to need I'm using a piece of uh, vanilla today as my card base I'm going to fold that in half so this is half a sheet of A4 here in Australia or half a sheet of letter size cardstock if you're in the US Okay, then I've got some other pieces here. This is my card front. Now, I just want to make sure that this is lined up correctly, and it is. So this piece here, Knight of Navy, is underneath. Then I've got this piece of Sahara Sand. I've got a scrap of vanilla as well for, um, for doing the punch. So that's going to be for, for this when we get to the sentiment. But first of all, I'm going to start working on the base, so on the Sahara Sand piece. Okay. So, I've already put some of my stamps on the block, so I'm going to be using this large, um, and you can see they're quite a bit bigger than what is pictured on the front here, this large um, piece that goes at the back, and then we've got the more detailed piece that goes over the top. You can see I've already inked mine up earlier, and um, I've still got some um, ink there on my stamps, but they will stamp just fine. It's going to be the same. Um, then I also have this piece here, which is like a centre, this one the center of the flowers and some more detail for the center and then we also have our sentiment and I'm using the one that says I'm thankful for you okay but you can use whatever sentiment you like of course so I'm going to start out with this guy here now before I just want to take it off the block for a second and show you um, when you look at this stamp and I hope you can see it maybe it's easier here on the plain cardstock it's got a pointy a couple of points that are bigger than all the others. The very biggest one, I always line up the top of my stamp with that large one. So let's put it on the block so that my large one there is facing up. And I'm going to do the back, this back piece in a lighter color. So the colors that I'm using today are Sahara Sand, which will end up on the background a bit. And for the actual flowers, I'm gonna be using Night of Navy and Balmy Blue. And then for my leaves, I'm going to use Mossy Meadow. Okay, oh, I just realized I haven't got the leaf stamp out yet, but that's okay. I'll pull it out in just a moment. So the balmy blue is going to end up at the back. And I'm inking that up first. And I'm going to make it so that that pointiest bit is at the top. Okay. I've got um, some grid paper underneath, which is a really good base. Um, sometimes, though, when you're stamping, you may find that you need a mat. Um, but because I've got um, several layers of grid paper, it's taking the place of a mat, but a stamping mat or a piercing pad would be great under your work because the, the photopolymer stamps do need that extra cushioning okay, to get a really good image. And you'll see it doesn't look really perfect. It's actually a little bit um, kind of darker on one side and lighter on the other. That's fine for this. Believe it or not, it doesn't affect the, the final result of this at all. There we go. And do another one down the bottom here. You can have as many of these as you like on here. The first one I did, I had four. One, two, three, four. This one I've got three, but it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. You can put them wherever you like. I'm just sort of arranging mine. Now, that was the biggest one. The next one, the smaller one, goes inside that. Okay, now for this one, I'm going to be using the Knight of Navy ink. And you can see I've actually got um, quite a bit of um, ink already on this from previous. Um, you may find that you want to clean this up a little more before you start, only because it can make it hard to line up 
the centers. But the good news for this set is if you don't perfectly line them up, it's okay. Now, once again, see how I've got the, the tallest spiky bit up towards the top? I'm gonna to make that go right at the top as well. And what that's gonna do is that's going to um, make this kind of aligned, okay? It doesn't matter if you haven't perfectly lined it up in the center just kind of go as close as you can it's a very forgiving set so you really can't go too far wrong with it and this one once again that tall one up towards the top and I find that's the best way to line them up let's bring it up close so you can see them okay see they're not completely perfectly lined up but it won't matter the final result. See how it looks like they've been painted one over the top of the other? I love the way this stamp set layers. It's really quite clever. All right, then I've got my my circle and I'm going to go in that with navy as well. And once again, just popping it right there in the middle. Doesn't matter if it's a perfect match or not. In fact, I think it looks kind of good. Let's have a look here. There it is. Um, see how I've kind of missed the top a little bit? I like that. I think it highlights that center. So if that happens, don't be alarmed. I kind of like it when it's not completely lined up because it adds, see this one I've got a little bit at the bottom. That helps to actually highlight. There we go. Yep, happy with those. And then I've got my tiny details, which just sort of help to finish this off. Pop them in the middle once again. Doesn't matter if they're 100% correct, but they're looking pretty good. You see, I managed to get a couple of little smudges on here when I was working. That's okay, we'll cover those up with our leaves. Leaves are great for that. So I've got a couple of blocks here that I'm going to use for my leaves, and I'm using Mossy Meadow. For me, Mossy Meadow is this, um, the color that seems to be the most neutral, which is makes a lot of sense, because it is actually in our neutrals color family, but it's the most neutral when working with different colors. So it's fantastic for adding leaves to other colors okay it just always looks good it looks great with these navy and blue tones um, and let me grab the stamp out of here so the one that I used originally is this one which is kind of more of a I'll just pop it on my block here kind of I'll stamp it on the background here so you can see it it's kind of not particularly detailed, a little bit of detail, but not a lot. The other stamp in here, this one adds more detail. Okay, so if you want to add more detail, you go with the other one. But if you put the two together, they look fantastic. So I'm actually going to stamp it off on here. And I'm going to pop this here. So I don't want it to be too dark. I want a lighter effect, so I'm going to stamp it off again. I'm putting this over those smudgy marks that I left. That looks better. And then again, I'll have one down here, going off the page. And we're gonna have one up here. Do we need any more? Maybe not. I'm gonna have just one more going off the page over here at the side, just for a little bit of a more balanced look. All right happy with that okay now you could just leave them like that if you wanted to but I like I said I'm gonna go in with my more detailed one and you might notice on my original card here on the crumb cake I have the um, the less detail and then I have several with more detail so I did some without the detail and some with the detail because it just added a little bit more interest so this time I'm gonna go in with my more detailed one. Let's stamp it off so you can see it. Okay, see how it is more detailed. So I'm not gonna stamp this one off because I'd like that detail to show. And we'll, I'm gonna put, uh, and you kind of just kind of line it up as best you can, but if it's not perfect, once again, it doesn't really matter because the color underneath just looks like, it just looks like a leaf moving slightly in the breeze, I think. I actually really like this look. I think it's lovely. I'm going to leave those two as they are. I'm going to add a little bit of detail to this one. There we go. Just like that. Now you could just leave it like that if you wanted to. It's quite beautiful just as it is. However, what I wanted to do was I wanted to add a little bit more background detail. 
um, and I did that with a bit of script now let's show you here can you see I've added a little bit of script here and here and a little bit down the bottom here now for that I actually used this stamp which is from the forever blossoms stamp set oh no no it's not I lied it's the Parisian beauty stamp set see this one here and I thought that was really quite nice but other options, if you like them as well, you can use script from any stamp set. So from here, from the very Versailles set, that would also be beautiful. Okay, I might do that one on a different card. But I'm using this one from the Parisian Beauty set today. And I'm going to use the same colour um, ink as my base. Okay, so for this one, because it's a crumb cake base, I used crumb cake ink. And for this one, I'm using Sahara Sand. And all I want to do is have my script fairly straight on my page. So I'm just going to help use my grid paper to... I love that look. I just think it looks fantastic. Uh, where will I have it? A little bit here. And to me, it really finishes off this... Can you see how it just kind of adds that little bit of background detail? I love it. I think it looks really good. Okay. All right. So what I might quickly do is I'm going to use some Knight of Navy because we're going with um, Knight of Navy on our card. You could use, um, actually, maybe I won't. I might use the Mossy Meadow. As you can see, I quite often make these things up as I go along. So I'm going to use my Mossy Meadow and I'm going to zip around the ink. Or you could use your Sahara Sand too if you wanted it to be very subtle. But um, the Mossy Meadow is still subtle enough. Like I said, it is a true neutral. So let's zip this around. So with all these sets retiring at the moment, the exciting thing, of course, is that it's making way for new products, um, which you will see on the 3rd of June, or be able to order on the 3rd of June. You may have seen them before that. Okay, I'm really happy with this background piece. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my... Um, I'm it say I am thankful for you and I'm going to color that I'm going to stamp that in navy as well seeing as we have navy on this card beautiful and I'm cutting this out with the oh I always forget the name of this punch I think I think it's the timeless label <laughs> every time I can never remember the name of it here we go I'll put it up on the screen for you if I'm incorrect. I'll put it up on the screen for you anyway. So you should be able to see the name of it there. Okay. When you line this stamp up, because it's a, a kind of not a symmetric, not a symmetrical stamp, I make sure that I line up the edges with the, the main word, the thankful, because that makes it just a little bit easier. And I'm going to use my dauber again with the Mossy Meadow ink on it just to zip around this and I've got some dimensionals here I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals just two here now I don't put them too close to the edge and that's because I want to add some leaves and I'm going to do that kind of after the after the fact so I'm putting this down just like that now I have my leaf punch in here and I also have some champagne foil which is probably so far my most favorite well I go through stages sometimes I love the copper the most sometimes I love the champagne the most but I do use a lot of this champagne so I'm going to use my leaf punch and I'm going to make three punches one two Here's a little tip for you. If you go up, down, like down, up, down, you can fit more along an edge, okay? So by using the space in between, like going up and above the two leaves, so not having them all. So if I was putting them all the same distance away from the edge, I would not be able to fit three in on that small piece. But by having one higher, I can get more in. So just a little tip for you. All right, so we've got our three leaves. Actually, I haven't decided if I want three or maybe just two maybe just two we'll see and I am going to attach these with some glue dots I find glue dots best for attaching this kind of stuff 
So I'm finding myself a dot. Here's one right here. And I'm going to put this kind of where the, the leaves join together, where that central um, joint is there. I'm actually putting my glue dot behind that. And I'm going to have one leaf here and I'm going to push that down so it's not going anywhere. I think maybe two will be enough actually, not three. Oh, it won't get wasted. I'll use it on another card. All right. And yep, I think two is enough. Right. Just like that. All right. Um, I am going to go ahead and attach this. I have got one more thing I want to add, but I'm going to put it all together and add that at the very end. I'm using Tombow multi-purpose adhesive to stick my cardstock to cardstock. I prefer that. If I'm using um, designer series paper, I prefer to use a lighter weight um, adhesive such as Snail. Um, if you're watching this after the Snail has been discontinued because that's also going, um, then my suggestion is the new product called Stamp and Seal will be the product that you'll be using for that. All right, so I'm going to put this one now. On this piece here and I've got my vanilla card base you can use vanilla thick there's a thicker cardstock or you can use um, the normal vanilla but I do prefer the thicker for card bases all right so it just to me still needed one last thing and so the last thing that I decided it needed was a little bit of linen thread this is stuff that Linen thread to me is something you just want to have in your collection at all times. It's great. And I'm just going to attach that once again with a glue dot. Glue dots, if you're not sure what kind of adhesive to use for attaching things, the answer is almost always glue dots. Mini glue dots. Love them. Whoop, sorry. Bump the camera. And I'm just going to trim that off. And we are going to call that a finished card. Now you can see I've got one done on the Sahara sand and one done on the crumb cake. They're similar, a little bit different. Do you have a preference? Which one do you like the best? I like them both, but I think I prefer the Sahara sand one. Anyway, I think they're lovely and I'm sad that this set is retiring, but I have to say, if you don't have it yet, it's not too late to grab it. So um, I hope you enjoyed that today and I will be back with really more for you soon.